I'm sure that you listened as I talked to the kids, so I'm sure that you know what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to focus on being a wise builder. All through this month, we've been talking about being wise. Uh, we'll come back to that again next week as well. But this morning, we're going to consider what Jesus says about being a wise builder, a wise builder. Now, over the last couple of weeks, as we've been looking at this wisdom idea in in, uh, the, in the Bible, as we've been doing that this month, we've seen that wise is as wise does. If you say you're wise, but you're not doing the right thing, that's not very wise at all. And we also saw last week that you can be wise in the wrong way. You can be wise to your own greed and your own ends, doing things by worldly wisdom, but not God's way. So we're going to look today, and we're going to see what Jesus says about being a wise builder. We'll be in Matthew chapter 7, the end of Matthew chapter 7, as we talk about a wise builder and one that's not so wise. But before we go to God's word together, let's go to prayer one more time. Go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, thank you for bringing us to this place and this time as we worship together, as we sing your praises, as we look to your word, as we study, as we seek to draw near to you. Lord, I pray that our hearts would be fixed on wanting to be and working to be good builders faithful builders, wise builders in your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you might build within our lives as we yield ourselves to you. Help us to hear from you this day. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, we are looking at a familiar account, familiar not just because we've read it in Scripture, but familiar because we have sung the song. The kids didn't know the song. How many of you knew the song? How many of you had no idea about the wise man built his house upon the rock? Yeah, a few of you didn't know that song. All right, I thought everybody knew that song, uh, but we learned it. So we may have to work on that together yet. It uh, comes from Scripture, and it comes from this passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. It's a familiar story to a lot of us, and it's, it's the closing phrases, the closing word that Jesus had as he finished his Sermon on the Mount probably his most famous sermon and certainly the longest one recorded in Scripture. Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27. It says, Jesus says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Jesus describes a wise builder and one who is not so wise. So what makes the one a wise builder? What is it that that makes him a, a wise builder. Well, you've got to start with verse 24. And in verse 24, Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine, that's the beginning spot. That's where we start. A wise builder hears the word of the Lord. A wise builder listens to the word of the Lord. Now, Jesus had just finished his Sermon on the Mount. He was finishing it. So they had been listening to Jesus preach in the flesh. Jesus was there and they were hearing it. Jesus is not physically here with us to preach to us. So how can we hear the word of the Lord today? Well, we've got to get into his word. We've got to dig into his Bible. We read his Bible. We study his Bible. We come together for Sunday school and for small groups and for study times. We come together in worship service and talk about his word. They were listening to him. So when when. Jesus says that this wise man hears the word of the Lord. That's important to understand. And when Jesus says he hears, that means he listens. He learns what Jesus says. He pays attention to what Jesus says, and he remembers it. He doesn't just let it go in one ear and out the other. Now, I know that none of you are like that. I got in trouble already today for hearing a name, and in the name goes, and out the name goes. How many of you know I have problems with names sometimes? How many of you know I have problems with numbers sometimes? I'm one of those people who, when I dial the phone, I go, 402, 402. Um, uh -huh. People say, why do you look back and forth four times to dial one dumb number? 
Well, because if I don't, I'll get it wrong. And sometimes I'll be pushing the numbers and I'll go, oh, I pushed the wrong number. My, my brain doesn't connect well with it. You know what? I've studied five different languages. I can do things that a lot of people can't do, but I can't remember numbers and I don't do very well with names. So when it comes to listening to Jesus' word, he doesn't mean that we just hear it in, out, in one ear and out the other. It means that we listen and we learn and we pay attention to what he says so that we can remember what he says. Why is it so important to get that through Bible study, through paying attention? Why is it so important that we do that? Well, it's important because a wise man not only hears and listens, but as he hears and listens, the wise man begins to know the will of the Lord. He knows what the Lord's will is because he's listened. If you don't pay attention, if you don't remember, you won't know what his will is. And, and this way we know what God expects of us. But folks, don't miss out. He's not wise just because he hears the word of the Lord. Jesus says, when he hears my words and acts on them, when he puts action to what he knows, that's when he can be wise. He's not wise if he just hears the word of the Lord. Lots, the devil knows what Jesus says. He knows it well. And he's not wise just because he knows the Lord's will He's wise when he moves past that and when he begins to do what the Lord says. You see, wisdom is not just knowing what's right, it's knowing it and doing it. It's not wise if you know, as a matter of fact, it's just plain foolish, if you know what to do and don't do it. If you know that you can't turn on a red light, uh, turn left on a red light, you can turn right on a red light. If you know you can't go through a red light and you go through it anyway, that's not smart. You may die and somebody else may too, that's foolish to run the, the red light. If you know what to do, but don't do it, it's not wise. So a wise man hears what God says. He knows God's will and he does it. He does what the Lord says. That's what a wise builder does. In fact, that's what makes him wise is because he hears the Lord. He hears the word of the Lord. He knows what the Lord wants and then he chooses to do it. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty simple. It's really not that hard. And Jesus says, that's the guy who's, who's like the one who builds his house on a rock. I, I like that guy. But that's not the only thing that Jesus talks about. He also talks about a foolish builder, uh, a foolish man building a house. So how is the foolish man different from the wise man when it comes to building? Well, that's when you skip down to verses 25 and 26. Verse 25 says that this man, just like, just like the wise man, he hears these words of Jesus. Uh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. The foolish man hears the word of the Lord too? Yep, yep, he hears the word of the Lord also. Uh, there are some who don't ever hear. Maybe they should, but they don't. But in this case, Jesus says, this foolish man is one who hears the word of the Lord, just like the wise builder. So if he hears what the Lord says, then then does he understand the will of the Lord? Yep, yep, yep. He knows exactly what God wants in his life. This, this foolish man knows what God wants. He hears what God says. He knows what God wants, but he doesn't do it. Instead, this guy, it, it says that a foolish man does not act on those words of God, doesn't do what God says. So even though he hears the word of the Lord, he knows what God wants, he won't do it, he chooses not to do it. Instead, he turns his back on, on God's way and God's will and he walks away in order to choose to do things his own way. He's choosing his way, not God's way. Jesus says, that's foolish. That is foolish. And yet that's what most people do. We do things our way because we want it our way and we insist on having things our way, frequently not his way. The foolish man knows what God wants, but he chooses to do differently. He knows the Lord's will. He knows exactly what it is that God wants, but he doesn't do it. He knows, but he chooses not to obey. That's who Jesus says is a foolish man. Um, pretty big difference between the two of them. Pretty big difference between the two of them. They both hear, they both understand, but they don't obey. They don't both obey. One does, one doesn't. That's a pretty big difference. Both are choosing. Notice that. They're choosing what they will do when they hear what God wants them to do. Okay, well, Al, that's, that's 
that's pretty clear. It's, it's not all nice, but it's pretty clear. So Jesus says they're both building. What are these guys building? What is it that these guys are building? Well, Jesus says they're both building a house. They're building a house. Now, you got to understand when Jesus talks about building a house, why do we build a house? You build a house to live in it, right? You, you build a house that you're dwelling. They're designing the house in which they're going to live their lives. So when Jesus talks about that, he's not just talking about where they live, but he's talking about how they live. Jesus is talking about their life and the way they live it, not just a house. He's talking about the way that they live. Now, I believe that the picture that Jesus paints looks something like this. They're both building a house, and I think both houses look a lot alike. They may be painted just a little different, but they, they look a lot alike. You see, both of these guys want a good house to live in. They want their house to be built well and built, built right. They probably both use the best materials that are available to them. They, they want a nice finished project. They want it to be the way it's supposed to be. So they're building very similar looking houses. It's not their building method or their building materials that Jesus talks about. They both have the word of God. They both know the will of God. Of course, uh, I, I need a caveat in here. Uh, truth be told, houses can look pretty much alike, but if you have a builder who cuts corners, you pay for it the whole time you own the house. Now, how many of you know about that? Uh, if they cut corners, if they don't do it, you're going to have a lot of fixes over time. So I'm hoping that both builders are using the right materials and building the right way. If one is cutting corners, I expect I know which one it is, not the wise builder. That would be the foolish one. But the real difference between these two houses is what they're built upon, the foundation. One builds his house upon the rock, and one builds his house on the sand. The wise man builds his house on a solid rock foundation, makes sure that it's set right, going to stand, going to be firm. It has a solid roots to sit on. The foolish man, he builds his house on a very expensive oceanside sandy beach because it's going to be a perfect view and it's going to be beautiful. How many of you have watched those houses slide into the ocean? You ever seen them? Hmm. Um, yeah. Boy, he has a nice view. He's got a beautiful house on a nice sandy beach. But Jesus says it doesn't stop there. He says a storm blows in. And he says it rains. Well, by the way, notice the storm is both on the righteous and the wicked. The storm is both on the wise and the foolish. Storms are part of life. Uh, there are a lot of people who think, well, if I give my life to Jesus, I don't have to face any more storms. Everything's going to be coming up roses. <laughs> Watch out for the thorns. Jesus says that if we follow him, uh, they persecuted him, they'll persecute us. Storms are going to come in our lives whether it's persecution, whether it's sickness, whether it's age, whether it's, whether it's knees that are falling apart or backs that hurt or ears that don't hear the way they're supposed to. Uh, it, our, our bodies are, are going to be falling apart. We're going to be hit with difficulties and stress. That's part of life. Jesus certainly does not say that the wife's builder will only see sunshine up on his house on the rock. We'll both see the storms, but there is a difference. The storm blows in and it hits both houses. And Jesus says the rain falls and the floods come and the winds blow and they beat against that house. They slam against both houses and they, they're hit with that storm. The wise builder, he's built a house on a firm foundation and, and when he's hit with the full force of the storm, his house stands firm. It's got a firm foundation. It's built on truth and on, on what's right. It's built on an immovable foundation. The other house, yeah, not so good. It's built with a nice view on a sandy shore, but the rain falls, the floods come up, the winds blow, and the house on the sand, it falls. And Jesus says, great is its fall. It falls apart, it's broken. You know, it sounds to me like both of these men have a lot of things in common, more in common than not. Jesus says they both hear his, his word. They both know what he wants them to do. They both build their houses so that they can live in them. Sunshine and rain fall on both of them, but everything is different in the outcome because of their choices. Our choices determine whether we're a wise builder or a fool. One chooses to do things God's way, 
One chooses his own way. One chooses to please God, the other one chooses to do as he pleases. And isn't that what makes us wise or foolish today? Choosing God's way or choosing our own. So let, let me take us back to, to what the men were hearing. What were the words or instructions that Jesus was talking about when he said they need to hear his words, those who hear my words? Both of them, remember, heard his words. But remember, this is the closing part of the Sermon on the Mount. Now, the whole Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, all of it is about living our lives for Christ, doing what Jesus says. So they've been hearing a lot of things from Jesus about how to live, how he wants us to live. So, so let's just pick up a couple of the things that they would be hearing. For instance, in Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16, Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything but to thrown out to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Verse 14 says, you're the light of the world. And then in verse 16, he says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Jesus says, you're supposed to be the salt. You're supposed to be light. He says, you're supposed to let your light shine so that others see your good works and they glorify your Father who's in heaven. They glorify the Lord. That's wise. That's what Jesus says we're supposed to do. So the wise man, well, he hears that, that we're supposed to be salt, and he says, I want to be salt. I, I want to flavor the world around me. I want to make an impact on people around me. And he says, I be the light. I want to be the light. I want to let Jesus' light shine so that others can see what's true and right and so that they will be drawn to him. So he's going to let his light shine for God's glory. He's going to let his light shine to draw others to Jesus. The foolish man, well, he hears it too. He knows that God wants us to be salt and light in the world. He knows that, but he's going to let his light shine when he wants to let it shine. And when he lets it shine, he sure thinks that people ought to pay attention to how wonderful he is, not to bring glory to God. He wants the spotlight on himself. So many are like that. If he's going to shine, then people better notice. Maybe pay him for it, too. They're different. Different perspective, different approach. Well, these men would have also heard Jesus' admonition in, in Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15, Jesus had said, If you forgive others their transgressions, by the way, this is right after the Lord's Prayer. He says, If you forgive others their transgressions, then your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your father will not forgive your transgression. Jesus' words, he says, hey, you forgive others or don't expect to be forgiven. So the wise man, well, he knows that others have wronged him and, and done him wrong, but, but he forgives. He forgives for them so that they'll be forgiven, but he also forgives for himself because if you forgive others, then you can be forgiven by the father so he's wise and he does what he's supposed to do. The fool, he's not about to forgive those people. No way. They're jerks. They don't deserve forgiveness. They've treated him wrong. They're, they're in the wrong and he doesn't have to forgive them. He might forgive them if they apologize. On the other hand, he might not. He might hang on to it for just a while because they don't deserve forgiveness. The problem is that Jesus says, you forgive. If you don't forgive, then neither will your father forgive you. That's pretty serious stuff. The wise man, the foolish man, they both heard what Jesus said. They heard what he said then in 6, 19 and through 21. He said, do not scope for yourself treasures in, on earth where, rust, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus is saying you need to serve the Lord in such a way that you're storing up treasures in heaven. The wise man, through serving and giving, through helping and worship, through witnessing and sharing, through loving God and loving others, He's storing up treasures in heaven. 
The fool, well, he'll do some good things for people, especially when, when he's going to get something in return, when they'll owe him. He's storing up treasures on earth. He's building his own kingdom, but it's not God's way. And of course, maybe the verse that I like best in, in Matthew 6, Matthew 6, 33, Jesus said, but seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. Jesus says it's all about seeking God, seeking the Lord and his ways. He said, see that you're living for him, that you're seeking him and doing what he says. God says that's what we need to do. So the wise man, he's going to seek the kingdom of God. He's going to seek God and God's kingdom and righteousness to live in righteousness above all else. And he's going to trust God to take care of his needs. The foolish man, on the other hand, boy, you know what's first for him. It's himself. He's going to take care of good old number one, and everybody else can just wait for, for their time. You see, he hears the word of God, but he chooses to do things his own way. That's what a foolish man does. His way, not God's way. That's why he's a fool, is because he's doing it his way, not God's way. When we choose selfishness over God and righteousness, I can promise you that's a certain recipe for disaster, and great is the fall thereof. The wise man chooses to listen to the Lord and do things God's way. He may not get ahead according to the world standards. He may not get rich and, and wealthy and, and climb the ladder to worldly success, but choosing to do things God's way, that's what makes him wise, and it will bring spiritual success. It will build upon that perfect foundation. Now, Jesus says that both these guys, the wise and the foolish, both of them are building. And the truth of it is, if we claim to be Christians, we're building. When it comes to faith, each of us is building something. We can build wisely with Christ as our solid foundation, building the right thing, the, the right way with the right tools, focusing on Christ and his word and obedience and faithfulness, loving God, loving others. We can build wisely on a solid rock or we can build foolishly, selfishly, doing things our way, not his way. We can build wisely or foolishly. We can, we can build for Christ and for his glory shining his light into the darkness around us, or we can choose to build our own castles in the sand, sand castles. Of course, you know what happens to sand castles when the tide comes in or a wave gets a little higher, even when it starts raining good and hard. They crumble, they fall, they come falling down, they're crushed. Okay, so building for Christ. I want to be building for Christ. I hope you do too. What does it take? First, we've got to listen to God's word. We've got to listen to what Jesus says so that we'll know his will. Then we've got to commit ourselves, choose to obey what he tells us to do. Part of that, obviously, is going to be following the, the great commandment. You remember that, right? It's love. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You cannot build for Christ without loving God and loving others. And part of that's going to be forgiving forgiving others who have done you wrong, not just for our, not for just for their sake, but for our sake. If they've hurt or offended us, we forgive so that we will be forgiven. And I would hate not to add, we've got to shine. We've got to let His light shine through us into the darkness of the world around us. When we do that, we will be salt and light for Christ and for His kingdom, not for our own glory but to bring glory to him and to draw sinners to him. That's what building for Christ looks like. That's how a wise builder builds. So friend, are you building for Christ? You, are you building for Christ or are you building for self? You're building. Are you building for Christ or for self? Are, are you going to be a wise builder or, as Jesus says, a fool? Well, I don't even like that word. I, yeah, I don't like it very much either. I sure don't want to be it. And I hear what Jesus says. Do not be mistaken. Do not be fooled. Jesus doesn't leave any middle ground. He doesn't say, well, you can be partway wise and partway foolish. If you're not 
wholly wise, if you're not completely given over to him, then it's foolish. If we follow him partly, but not all the way, I don't want to be a foolish builder. So what will you choose? We're all building in the things that we do and the way that we do them. Storms are going to come our way. So will your what you're building, will it stand or will it fall? Be a wise builder. Be a wise builder. Build right with the right materials in the right way, the right structure, and build on the right foundation, the foundation of Jesus Christ. He is the solid rock that can be the foundation. But even on that solid rock, we've got to build and build well. Will you be a wise builder or a fool? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your truth. Sometimes it doesn't even sound very nice. But you give us all that we need to know so that we can hear your words, so that we can choose to, to obey, to know your will and to choose to obey. That makes us wise. Building a, a, a solid life that will stand even in the storm. Father, it is so easy for us to get our eyes on us and to focus on us instead of focusing on you. But that will never bring us to... to being a wise builder in your kingdom. He'll never bring us to seek first the kingdom and righteousness, but he'll always be seeking self first, and that doesn't work. It's broken, and we're bound to crumble and to fall. So, so Lord, I pray that you'll help us to understand what it is to build wisely and to understand that we each have a choice. Lord, I pray that we might choose you I do so in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to our time of response and invitation, I would say this. If you're not yet building on that solid foundation of Jesus, if you haven't, if you haven't committed your life to Him and come to Him in faith and faithfulness, then you can do that today. You can become a Christian today. If you choose, you can give yourself to Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. He paid the price for you. He was buried, but on the third day, he rose in victory. If you've not committed your life to that crucified and risen Savior to become a Christian, to have that faith, that foundation of Jesus, you can do that. You can give your life to Christ today, and I'd encourage you to do that. Don't wait. If you're not certain about what that takes or what it is, I would be glad to talk to you later today or, or through the week. Give me a call. Jesus wants you to build on the right foundation, but you've got to choose. If you have committed your life to Christ and say, yes, I'm a Christian, I know I'm a Christian, then I'd ask, how's your building going? Are you building with the right tools in the right way? Are you building in a way that brings God the glory? Is it about you or is it about Him? Christian Jesus was speaking to how we live as Christians. He said there are a whole lot of folk who start with the right foundation or think they do, but the way they're building is bound to fail. Be a wise builder. Build in Jesus. If you need to make a response to Christ, either as, as someone who needs to come to Christ in salvation or someone who needs to get some things straightened out with Him or to make a fresh commitment to Him, whatever that would be, then you come as we stand together now and sing, On Christ the solid rock I stand.